If you are an SEO agency, you need to have local SEO in your repertoire because it is by far and away driving the best results of any placement inside of search marketing right now, especially if you're focused on the right type of clients, lawyers, plastic surgeons, dentists, landscaping companies, home services. They're literally printing money right now if they're ranking in the maps pack. And the reason is because when people search for those keywords, lawyer near me, dentist near me, that maps pack is incredibly prominent. It's taking up a ton of real estate. It is a protected asset within Google because all the other traditional SEO results are few and far between. They're littered all the way down the bottom of the page. Plus you're competing with like super, they're competing with all these different websites, Reddit. It's just, it's very fractured in terms of result. That maps pack holds a lot of attention from searchers and therefore drives a lot of business for clients. And I said this a million times and I'll say it again right here. Your job as an agency is to get your clients more customers. And the best way to do that right now is local SEO. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the exact process, the exact SOP that our agency uses to deliver a very high impact local SEO service for attorneys in some of the most competitive verticals in the entire country and it gets results. So let's jump in. So first and foremost, if you want access to this P, this is all inside of the blueprint training for $199. You get access to this plus all the training videos, plus all the templates that are linked into from here that I'll do my best to show you, but you really need access to the entire platform if you wanna see them. $199 gets you access to all this. It's an amazing offer, take it up while it lasts. So the first thing that we do when we take on a client is in the broader scope of a general SEO campaign, we're still doing the traditional SEO stuff because we have to do a lot of it in order to maintain the local rankings in order to punch them up. So within two days after a client starts, we wanna start this process. And the first thing that we do is we send them through an onboarding process that has a ton of information to get them to get our information on we call the nap stuff this is not new stuff but like name address phone number business information social profiles we get them to fill out this entire spreadsheet including access to a bunch of different profiles across the web that we really need access to to help us to go through to fill out their google business profile plus other citations that we need to build for them we have them fill that out and then we go through and we basically will complete a lot of that for them as well so once we have that step two is then we'll go and we'll do research on the serps and the competition in the SERPs. A lot of this is done during our sales process. It's important for our delivery team to get context on the campaign as well. So we'll have them go through and fill out this competitors tab inside of the same document here. That just gives us context for really the amount of work that we'll need to do. So we'll do like the keyword that they're ranking for, the target positions, the number of links that they have, the number of reviews that the competitors have, because it helps us to build kind of like a gap analysis internally on what we want to do, the links that, they, that we need to build, all that different type of stuff. So once we have that, done. The next thing that we do is we fill out this template for Google business profile content. So this is for posts. This is for products. This is for services. Essentially, again, we have our local SEO team, which is an offshore team of VAs, fill this stuff out, business name, business categories, all these different descriptions. You can see how long this document is, all these different products. We do, this is 23 pages. We do all this for our clients and then we'll upload that to that profile for them. So the first thing that we do is we determine the main and subcategories of the Google business profile. This is really important because we want to make sure that we're targeting the right searches as these things are going out. So like, for example, we come across a lot of our attorney clients that just have lawyer as their category, as opposed to personal injury lawyer, or car accident lawyer. You want to be very specific with these things. And we do that by doing research on the SERPs to understand who's ranking around it and what category we want to select. There's a tool that we use in here. It's called Plepper. It's a Chrome plugin. But what it allows us to do is it allows us to basically mass audit all the different results for those keywords that we want, and then make a decision about what category we want to select. So after that, we'll use a tool called Local Falcon, or we're using White Spark a lot now too is a really, really great tool that allows us to run a scan report of the local rankings for the keywords that we want for that target client, that grid, you see it all over social media, all over ads. So we use this to understand again, where they're currently ranking, who's ranking and what those profiles are looking like so we can get a little bit more context. So we'll also have our VA go in and fill out this entire template. We're looking at rewriting the name and description using the main keyword. Now, main keyword is important if you can get it to stick in the title. Little insider tip, it's so important that what we're doing with a lot of our clients is we're actually having them file DBAs to use inside of the Google Business Profile title in order to get them to rank. So for example, if the business name is Ryan Stewart Law Firm, we're having them file a DBA to be like Ryan Stewart Accident Law Firm, Accident Attorneys, because getting that keyword in there is incredibly important for ranking. So we'll write the service description, the product description, holiday hours, add in the link to a local landing page. We'll talk about that in a second. Set up the booking, answer any Q&A, and then also go ahead and write uh, all these things in. So once that VA finishes all that, 
It's an entire Google Business Profile optimization process. He zips that up and then we send it to the client for approval. And then after, once they approve it, then we'll go in and actually update the profile physically. So everything that I just mentioned, we'll add in services, name, Q and A, add all the links to social profiles, websites, et cetera. So after that, what we're doing, step five, is we're optimizing other local profiles as well. We're finding this is incredibly important in the, in the legal space that if you Google like Miami DUI attorney, you're not just gonna see websites, you're gonna see fine law, expertise.com, superlawyers.com. These are profile, we call them aggregator websites that Google's ranking these profiles. They're probably pretty important in terms of the local SEO process and you're gonna wanna have a feature there. We'll take the NAP information that they gave us and if they have a profile, we'll get to log into it and optimize it. If they don't have a profile, we'll create it for them and share access with them. So we're creating all these profiles for them and making sure they're optimized using all the information that we have. We're also going through and trying to get reviews for them. And in some instances, we're even advertising on those platforms as well. Because again, if you think about it, if somebody is searching for Miami DUI attorney and Avo is ranking first organically, and if you can rank them first in Avo, then they're gonna get leads from that. And again, what's this all about? This is all about getting leads. If you're getting your clients leads, you're not gonna hear from them and they're gonna pay your bills. So step six is setting up local rank tracking inside of that local rank tracking. Again, we're using WhiteSpark for that. We're just using that grid to track and also some specific keywords on top of that. Step seven is citation management. So we use WhiteSpark exclusively for citations. We run a citation audit and then we also just use them to build any additional citations. So we have tiers in terms of the list of citations. Tier one citations are gonna be like your aggregator website it's Avo, Yelp, Fine Law, Facebook, Foursquare. We'll build those ourselves manually. And then tier two are gonna be kind of like your traditional local citations that you've seen all over the S local SEO for the past decade. So then we start getting, those are all one-time tasks up until then. Then we start getting into recurring tasks because there's things that we need to do on a regular basis for these clients in order to really make sure that they are getting the results that they need. So one is we'll do review management. So we'll set up review management inside of WhiteSpark. We'll manage and monitor any reviews that they get. We'll debate any reviews that they, any bad reviews that might come in. So if there's a positive review, we'll write a response. If there's a negative review, we will alert the client first and foremost. Like you don't want to have a client be like, hey, you're supposed to be managing our reviews. We've got 10 bad reviews this month. What's up? Or we'll alert the client and we'll ask them if they have any insight into it. We'll debate it with Google. If we can't remove it, then we'll just we'll just respond to the review based on what the client got us to do. We are also checking rankings every single month. We're making sure that the rankings are continuously punching up. We're also creating content for Google on this as well. So another big piece of what we're doing is review management with the client and review generation. Reviews are something that you cannot ignore in the local search ranking algorithm. It's my opinion, the most important thing, probably like the equivalent of what links have been in traditional SEO for a long period of time. So there's a lot of review automation software out there. I've seen people set up some pretty slick stuff inside of like high level where it's like they close a deal, they send an automated review. It's all good and great if you're doing like a lot of volume. If you're doing like, if your client is doing like 200 new customers a month, like if they're a coffee shop, cool, you can do that. But for lower volume businesses, surgeons, attorneys, the automation stuff doesn't work. Doesn't work. The response rate is too low, you need more reviews in order to move the needle. So we install a manual review process with our clients. So it looks something like this with attorneys, we have three different tactics to get them. Number one is to build a list of character reviews for people they went to law school with, people that they've worked for in the past. And this is really anyone inside of the business too. Anyone that can speak to the character and the goodwill and good nature of the business, call them, text them, ask them for a review. I'm trying to build my business, would you mind taking a minute leaving us a positive review on Google? That's one. Two is gonna be past clients. So going through a database of past clients that they've had, calling them up. Don't email, don't text, call them up. Have your secretary do it, have your intake person do it, call them up and tell them, hey, I haven't spoken for a year, hope everything's going well. Look, I just started a new practice, I'm just trying to get this off the ground, would you mind leaving this review, we'll go a long way. That's number two. Number three is then of course, clients that have just closed or happy. So again, call them as soon as you give them the settlement, as soon as they're signing the paper, call them on the phone, hey, would you mind leaving a review? Yeah, no problem. I texted you the link. <laughs> Would you mind opening it and doing it while we're on the phone? Like it's important to hold them accountable, keep them doing it. Because if you just text it to somebody, it, they just don't do it. So like get them on the phone, talk to them, make sure that they're getting it done. So that's reviews. Another thing that we're doing, which is really important is also again, more traditional on the SEO side, which is website architecture. So website architecture, meaning you need to have the appropriate local setup pages on the website. If you're gonna make sure that you want the, the website to rank locally. So again, inside of this SOP, I have these charts and these diagrams that will show you exactly what these look like. But let me just kind of give you a quick overview of how we do this. So we map the website 
inside of a mural board so we can see kind of like top of level navigation, the pages that they have. For every location that they have, and this is gonna be highly debated, that's great, debate me in the comments. For every physical verified location that they have, they should have a set of pages that talk to the services that they do. So we're talking about attorneys. If you have a verified office in Miami, you should have page for Miami plus your main keyword. So let's say it's personal injury. Personal injury is the main umbrella keyword for what they're targeting. Within personal injury, there's car accidents, there's slip and fall, there's medical malpractice, there's all these different sub practice areas. So each one of those is gonna have a sub practice page targeting Miami personal injury, then Miami car accident, Miami blah, blah, whatever. If they don't have more than one verified location, what I see a lot of SEOs doing, it's a little bit old school, is creating a ton of doorway pages. So Fort Lauderdale, Boca, all across the state, they just crank out all these pages. It's a little bit old school for me, I don't really like that. I tell my clients, the only time we're gonna do that is if you have a verified location for that. First of all, it saves on scope. Second of all, it's a doorway page. Uh, it doesn't really work as much anymore. And third of all, those pages don't really generate that much results anyways. This is really more to support what we're trying to do in the local search side of things in terms of ranking the maps pack. So for every verified location, they have a, should have an associated set of pages, and then you're gonna link to the main page. So for example, if they're in Miami, Boca and Fort Lauderdale, you're gonna have a set of practice area pages on the top level navigation. That's just gonna be serve practice areas and then list them out. When they click on that, it will default to the main location, Miami car accident, Miami personal injury, et cetera. Then they're gonna have another tab that says offices. And when they click on Miami, it'll be Miami, Boca, Fort Lauderdale. When they click on Miami, it will go to the Miami personal injury page. When they click on Boca, it'll go to the Boca personal injury page. And then underneath those pages, they will have their own, again, set of the sub practice area pages on that. From the GBP, you're gonna to link to the main personal injury page, Miami personal injury, Boca personal injury, Fort Lauderdale personal injury. That's where you're gonna to link to from the Google business profile. So that's a kind of quick and dirty nutshell on how to set up page arc architecture. Again, I have all this stuff mapped out inside of SOP, plus some more instructional videos on how to do that. On top of that too, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create localized content on the website. So when I say localized content on the website, it doesn't have to, it has to be relevant to what ultimately you're trying to rank them for. You don't wanna just link to like Miami News, just because you're a Miami law firm, it's kind of random to just do Miami News, but you wanna do localized content as it relates to the business and the practice area. We like to only try and create content first and foremost that's gonna drive business and leads, but there is something to be said that once you get into months four, five, eight, 12, 16 with a client, that you create the supporting content that's ultimately gonna help to build out the proper infrastructure of the website and just help them sustain ranks over the long term. So if it's a car accident attorney, we're doing content like Miami car accident statistics, Miami DUI checkpoints, right, over the last 2024. Stuff like that, stuff that relates to the practice area that we're trying to do. Now, what we'll also do is we'll localize content that could be national. So for example, if it the, the topic is it's a DUI attorney, what to do after a DUI, that's a pretty good keyword because if somebody gets a DUI and they're searching for what to do after a DUI, they're in market. So it's a good topic from a lead generation point of view, but it's also a good topic from a content supporting content point of view. But we want to localize that to the market that they're in or the state that they're in. What to do after you got into a DUI in Florida, if it's a Miami company. So that's localizing the content to where they are. So again, I'm giving attorney examples because this is what we do in our sleep for our clients. But essentially, these are the content structures that we focus on. So first is gonna be the service or practice area pages. Secondary is gonna be supporting local content. And then the final piece of this is just local link building. I get these questions all the time about local link building. First and foremost, links aren't as important as they used to be, especially in the local algorithm. You wanna make sure that you have those tiered citations built out. So like those important aggregator websites, get on them, get active. Are they SEO followed links? No, they're not. But Google's telling us that those websites are important. If you want to rank in today's algorithm, you have to be an active, relevant, good business. That's what Google wants to show. And then traditional citations and then three are going to be your contextual links the more local the more relevant those are the better so traditional link building practices still apply here the more authority that the website has the better that you're going to rank locally but again locally it's important that it's important that you get on local websites too so looking for like men like local sponsorship links local events that you can sponsor local bloggers just searching google for like locally based websites that you can pitch and try and get them featured on a couple of those links are going to go a very 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 long way when it comes to this stuff so that is our entire local SEO process. I kind of zip through it because if you want this in its totality, if you want everything that's in here, all the links, all the trainings on top of this, I've got an entire boot camp that dives into this in extreme detail. It's $199, literally something that we sell to clients for $5,000. I'm giving you for $199. SOP templates, trainings, everything's inside of there. Hit the link below to get access and I'll see you in the next video.